everyone, welcome to Heathcote School and Science College. My name is Miss Kraku and I'm one of the food teachers here at the school. So today we're going to be making cheesy scones, one of my favourites, so I hope you like it too. Um, we'll talk through other ingredients that you can substitute um, what I'm using today with if you would like to try out a sweet version rather than a savoury version. But savoury is very nice. Right, so you are going to need at home some equipment like a baking tray, you will need a mixing bowl as well as a rolling pin, although you can do it by hand. You will also need um, a cutter, a um, pastry brush and a couple of ingredients, just a few ingredients. We've got in here your flour, which is self-raising flour, 250 grams. You're going to need a level teaspoon of mustard. We've got mustard powder here. Also, 40 grams of um, sorry, butter or margarine that you can use. Um, you'll need hard cheese as well. We've got 75 grams of hard cheese. We've got cheddar cheese that we're using today. Um, but you can use any other type of hard cheese that you like at home. You will need um, 125 ml of milk. We're using skimmed milk, but you may use semi-skimmed milk or any um, vegetarian options at home as well, or full if you'd like. Um, and I actually forgot you're going to need a scale to make sure that you've weighed out your ingredients accurately. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here a level teaspoon of my mustard yeah to go into my flour just going to use my palette knife to just mix that in if you have a wooden spoon at home you can use that or you can just use your hand now I'm going to do my favorite bit which is rubbing in the fat into the flour so my butter I'm going to just cut that into smaller pieces And then I'm going to rub it into the pastry, our favourite bit. Right, so when we're rubbing in, what we're doing is we're rubbing our fingers, yeah, and our thumb together like that, to rub in the fat and the flour. So the idea is that you're going to coat the flour with um, the fat, yeah, the butter in this case. So I'm going to keep doing this until it's all coated and I don't have any big chunks of fat okay so just do that nice and high so that you're actually rubbing in properly and not doing it in here okay so you're doing that right up nice and high it's a bit like it's snowing right now I think I'm done but I'm just going to check but it is done and I'm going to do that by just sifting the bowl a bit and just see if I've got any big lumps of butter on top. If I have, then which I've got a few bits, so I'm just going to quickly rub that in as well. Okay? Now when you join us in year seven we're going to be hopefully when you join us in year seven we're going to be using this method to make um other recipes like um fruit crumble and also when we're making pastry short crust pastry right so that's nicely rubbed in happy with that i'm just going to pour in my cheese and literally just mix that quickly in there like that distribute that evenly into the flour and next I'm going to just use my palette knife to make a well in the middle yeah just a hole little well in there and just pour in all my milk and then just mix that gently Almost done. Just mix that in. Right now, as you start to 
form that dough ball is going to get a bit stiff so then now's a good time to use your hand to finish off this part so I'm just going to use the one hand just to get in all the dry flour into this dough ball try not to use both hands because you're just going to get yourself sticky like sticky mess and then it's difficult to do this so one hand holding the bowl the other hand getting that dry flour in if you need a bit of help you know you can ask an adult or bigger brother or sister at home to help you yeah there we go got a nice dough ball there and actually you can see it's nice and empty in my mixing bowl right so the next thing is i'm just going to dust a little bit of flour onto my work surface just a little bit let me move these out of the way right there we go and i'm just literally going to just roll it out okay you can do that with your hands you can just pat it down with your hands if you don't have a rolling pin or if you have a rolling pin like me you can use that to roll it out okay if you find that your rolling pin gets a bit sticky then just dust a bit of flour onto it rub it on and then roll it out just roll in so it's roughly an inch or two thick yeah so you don't want it too thin so it rises nicely and then you can use your pastry cutter to cut out the scones like this. Right. I've got four out of that, so I'm just going to reform that and cut out some more. can get maybe one more out of that which I'll put on my other baking tray when I'm done yeah and if at home you don't have a, um, a cutter you can just use your hand yeah so you can just pat it down yeah you can use the side yeah just pat it like that and you've got your scone shape so what I'm going to do now is just brush the top with um, some milk, that's to glaze it, to give it a nice golden glow when it's baked. And then I'm going to play that, place this into the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes, okay, till it's nice and golden. So remember, you're going to need oven gloves to put this into the oven. Um, before I started, I did actually re um, preheat the oven to um, 170 degrees. So make sure you do that before you start cooking so that the oven's already hot, ready to start baking when you place this in. All right, okay, see you in a minute. Right, so we're back. I'm ready to take them out. Let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to put that onto my triangles. So it doesn't damage my work surface and I'm just going to check that they're actually ready so the first thing really to do is to see if it's golden these are nice and golden and I'm just going to take one I think I'll take that one that looks like my favorite one and just look at the bottom to see if that's golden as well okay so that's nice and golden and actually now I need to check in the middle to see if it's cooked in the middle 
So remember, these have just come out of the oven, so they're going to be hot. So please be careful. Maybe get an adult to help you with this. I've just cut that through the middle. That's gorgeous. Yeah, nice and um, even colour, and it doesn't look doughy, so we know it's cooked. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these onto my cooling rack to get them to cool. I'll use my pallet knife to just release them from the bottom. Right, please be careful with this. So if you need help from an adult at home, get someone to help you. like the sweet version you can always instead of using cheese you can add dried fruit in there maybe some chocolate chip but um and sugar as well okay into uh, into the flour mixture but you know you can also play around with lots and lots it's just endless lots and lots of different ingredients you can put into this to make sweet or savory scones enjoy